Let's talk a little bit more on innovation. You've identified certain factors that you say are critical for innovation that you've called um, XEX factors. Yes. Um, do you want to share at least some of those? Sooner or later, this issue of innovation comes down to what is your role? How can you begin to move and advance the innovation agenda for your organization? Or as I sometimes say to the, my executive seminar and, and classrooms here, um, how do you get to iLand? Uh, everybody wants to get there. How do you do it? And what's your personal responsibility to do it? And I, I've described these in terms of seven X factors. First is about explaining. Your organization needs to understand why innovation is so important to its future. You can't assume that people understand it until you explain it to them and interpret it to them in their terms. Why is growth so important? Is growth important because that opens up job promotion opportunities, it opens up opportunities for higher compensation, it allows you to open new offices, it may allow you to increase the, the size of your portfolio of products, it might allow you to reach more customers. What's the fundamental reason uh, behind this innovation agenda? That's about explaining and it starts there. Second is it's about expecting your colleagues to contribute to this. And sometimes I think organizations make the mistake of thinking about innovation backwards. We tend to focus on the ovation part of innovation. And we can all think of famous, famous innovators and famous examples of profound innovations. And the question I always ask my clients and, and students is, how many of your people think they are capable of being the next fill in the blank? Albert Einstein, Steve Jobs, uh, Elon Musk, who pick your favorite example of an extraordinary innovator or an example of an extraordinary innovation. That is an exclusionary in definition of innovation. What I encourage people to think about is how do you create an invitational understanding of innovation that invites ideas early on from everybody in your organization. The newest employee, the youngest employee, somebody who is perhaps not working in a particular functional area that might just have the key idea that unlocks a discovery in some other part of the corporation. So this issue of expecting people to get involved, expecting people to have the ability to think differently about a common problem and to come up with ideas and solutions that are better than the status quo, which is at the end of the day, the challenge of innovation. Third, it's about exploring. And by exploring, I mean thinking about the business with different boundaries than you might think of as an, a, as an everyday matter. Looking at your business from outside the perimeter, thinking about your business from the point of view of your customers, obviously, your, your suppliers, even your competitors, to understand potentially new ways of redefining the, the scope and footprint of your business. Because innovation and entrepreneurship is always in that no man's land between execution of today's business and exploration for tomorrow's business. And how do you explore? You explore the way Lewis and Clark explored. You send scouts out. You look outside of where you are civilized today to try to understand the frontier territory. So it's about exploring. And there are several others, but just to give, that gives you an idea of these X factors. In fact, there are seven of them uh, all together that, that I encourage uh, people who are with me uh, thinking about this issue to bring on and try on for size individually because these are things that matter in terms of how you as an executive, how you as a manager, how you as a CEO exemplify the commitment to this innovation and entrepreneurship agenda.